Hi, I'm Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you'd like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. Um, the Bible says that we're to show honor in the King James, where or to whom honor is due. And I think we're also to show honor when it's due. All of us, when we go through the loss of a loved one, we try to remind ourselves and the others, and we as pastors do this in the funerals, hey, show your loved ones that you appreciate them and that you love them while you have them because you don't know when you won't. And I think the Bible is getting at all of that. You know, eternal life is much more valuable and more important but this life has importance, or God would never have created it. Everything has meaning, and what we're doing here today has value, not only to this family, but to our church. Because someday it might be your son or daughter up here. Well, pastor, I just don't. Did you ever think that this would be you when you were growing up here? <laughs> no, you, you, don't, you can't necessarily see that day. So we do this um, to honor, but we also do it by faith, knowing that we're investing in the future. We want the future generations to see that it's always appropriate to obey God and to show honor to those who are doing his work. And uh, we thank the Lord for all of you, doctors and nurses and firefighters and retired people and moms and uh, housewives who don't get enough recognition, all, no matter what your position or career is, but today, here at Central, it's our privilege to pray for Pastor Adam and his family. I'm going to allow them, he and Sister Betty, to greet you guys today. And uh, the, the, not the kids, but the son and the daughter, <laughs> Marcus and Priscilla, can say anything if they'd like to as well. Pastor Adam? Just to take a real quick second because you'll hear from me here in a second. But just want to say thank you to all of you. My prayer continues to be the same, is to pray to God to give me the wisdom and knowledge to make the right decisions for this church body. Um, and, and honestly, instead of celebrating me, I want to celebrate each and every one of you. Thank you for being a part of Central here at Comfort of Maryland. This, nothing could happen without you being connected to this church, giving to this church, and we love and appreciate all of you. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you here at Central. Mine kind of goes with what he said. But, you know, we're very blessed to be a part of this congregation, even though we don't get to talk to every single one of you or speak to you each Sunday or on Wednesday nights. We're very thankful and very blessed for each of you, and we consider you all family. <laughs> if, yeah, amen. If you don't know... One of them will be going through a life event this year and will become a part of her own family. Later uh, this summer, Sister Priscilla is going to be married. And uh, so next year, congratulations. I'm sorry, but we will be kicking you out of this little nest, all right? So this is your last year. Uh, we're so appreciative of these guys and everything that God uses them to do. Again, if you would like to do a card, even if you didn't uh, prepare for today, you can do that at any time. If you don't want to do a card but just an honorarium or some sort of love gift, you can drop a check just using the regular envelope into the box. Anything that you want to do that doesn't need credit and you want to give a gift to them directly, have at it. I always encourage you to do that. But if you want credit, please know that that's available. Anything that's credited does get taxed to them. And, that's just the way the IRS is. And Jesus said, it's okay, right? All right, let's, um, let's pray for this gang today. Let's pray that the Lord, not only as Pastor Adam said, gives them wisdom, but let's pray that the Lord constantly protects them from the attacks of the enemy, 
that he blesses them with health and favor, and that he causes them as a family to impact our generations here at church. Amen? All right, come on, let's pray today. Father, we're so very grateful for this family. Yes, uh, pastors and deacons, come forward, lay your hands on this gang. We thank you for Pastor Adam today, Lord. We appreciate his ministry among us, and we're so grateful, Lord, that you've raised him up here and that you've blessed him, Lord, with this wife. We thank you for Sister Betty today, and we pray your blessing on her. Lord, thank you that she is here in partnership with Pastor Adam and, and used by you in the kingdom work. And Lord, I thank you today for this son, and I pray for Marcus on this Father's Day, Lord, that your blessing would be upon him, continue to guide his life and his future. And Lord, we thank you today for Priscilla, and we ask you to touch her as she prepares for this marriage and her future. Lord, we thank you for the blessing that we see in this family. Lord, how they help us here at Central and speak into us as fathers and mothers and husbands, how they speak into us, Lord, as a ministry here. We pray that you would protect them from the attack of the enemy, that you would bless them and meet all of their needs. God, that we would always be the church that they need us to be. Lord, I pray that you would use Pastor Adam today in the Word. May he be a blessing to us as we receive your Word with hungry and grateful hearts. In Jesus' mighty name and the people in God's house who belong to the Lord said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Well, happy Father's Day to all of you today. I don't know about you as a father, but... Um, you know, the greatest, uh, the greatest gift is uh, I'm so thankful to have come to know the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to yield to him as lordship in my life. But, you know, as a father, I was thinking this morning, dads, what a blessing it is to have your wife and your children serving God with you. Isn't that not right? I mean, some of you might have some that aren't serving God right now, or maybe they're not attending church at all, but I just pray for you. I pray for household salvation for you. But I was thinking this morning, man, I got the greatest Father's Day gift ever. My wife loves Jesus, and my kids love Jesus. I need nothing else, nothing else. I'm so thankful to the Lord this morning for that. Hallelujah. Hey, so today's message is called Be Intentional. Be Intentional. With focused purpose and deliberately. And deliberately. Now this morning I want you to see, yeah, there's a prop here and everybody's curious, what is this? What's this all about? So let's, let's focus here just a second, as you will. This morning there's a, a glass globe here that represents you. That globe represents you and if you've not yet come to the place of salvation... You're just a globe. You're just a human body existing. And I would encourage you today, if you've not yet come to know Jesus Christ, if you've not yet heard the good news or recognized him as Lord of your life, well, I can't encourage you enough to do so. Catch me, catch pastor, email us, call us. Make that decision to put Christ in your life. And so inside of us as Christians, there's a whole bunch of Jesus. You see the the size of Jesus, the size of the globe. And this is how God intentionally created Adam in the Garden of Eden. Is that it would be humans and God. The communications in the cold of the night. But as time and things go on, as life goes on, these represent things of the world. Things that begin to clutter and fog and cloud and make Jesus not so grand as he maybe once was or should be in our lives. So before I get too far this morning, there are three points to the, to the fathers. Maybe you're old school and somebody usually would joke with me and say, hey, I want you to step on my toes this morning as you speak. Or if you're more modern, I'm going to say I'm going to get up in your grill, guys. 
I'm going to get up in your grill a little bit, okay? I love you, but I'm going to get in with you today. All right? And so the first point is to the fathers. The second is to the fatherless. And the point number three is from your heavenly father. But this morning I want to start and on the screen you'll see a QR code. This QR code is from Life Church. If you don't know what a QR code, it's okay. If you do, get your QR code out on your app and snag that. For anyone who's not married, whether you're engaged or not, whether you're five or you're 95, if you're single, you really need to listen to this message. It's from Life Church, Craig Rochelle. They're doing a series called Modern Romance. This one specifically talks about dating for your soulmate. Awesome. Awesome. Everyone, listen, if you don't do QR code before I forget, and you have no clue, there's an envelope at your knees and probably a pen. Grab it. Write down Life Church, Modern Romance. Hopefully you can Google... YouTube, Life Church, Modern Romance, you'll get the same thing, okay? If you're not on apps, etc. Excellent teaching. Excellent teaching for you, okay? So for all of you who are single, listen, everybody today, we need to grow ourselves so that we don't become clouded and confused by the things of this world. This isn't just for fathers or the fatherless. The word of God is a double-edged sword. It cuts on one side, but it has the power to heal on the other side. So the word of God is effective for each and every person to hear this word this morning. A successful father is not about doing more. True success in fatherhood is about doing more of what matters. More of what matters the most. So in Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, God is creating. God is the ultimate entrepreneur. He creates. For you entrepreneurs, God is the ultimate entrepreneur. He was creating in the beginning. Trees, plants, animals. Matter of fact, he named this one area the garden, which means pleasure. And as he was creating this area, guys, the lawns, like the lines could be no straighter, right? The the edges of the mulch beds could be no more edged. The weeds didn't grow in the mulch. And I'm going to tell you something I believe strongly today. Prior to the fall of man, cats did not use your mulch as a kitty litter box. That one was orange. I'm telling you, it just has to be. The cats didn't use your mulch beds as kitty litter boxes before the fall of man. It couldn't have been because it was a pleasurable, perfect place. Wow. Or... The deer didn't come, and just as that beautiful flower was about to bud, and you find those little brown dots in your yard instead of your beautiful flowers. That was all before the fall of man. Adam's in this place living, and it's just pleasurable. It's perfect. Except God looks down and says, dude, man, you need a helper. You really do. Like you're, you're a mess, bro. You need a woman, a helpmate. Yeah, single guys, keep looking. Listen to that podcast. It's good. And so he creates woman, and the garden is beautiful. It's pleasurable. But there was something in that garden, an individual who spoke the same language that they did. As they were in the garden, the perfectly hedged, uh, the the, the hedges were perfectly trimmed. They, They often felt that maybe someone was watching them or sneering at them or there was a slyness of this 
eyeballs over the fence, if you will, this cunning feeling that they would have and they would see maybe a wave from this other individual or a nod or does anybody like like I have a little commute to work right to church and I ran over a dead snake today it was already dead relax earth lovers relax it was already dead but I ran over it and it just felt good for some reason why is that like, I was just going to turn around and do it again. It, do, does anybody say, that was cool. I ran over a dead smashed snake and it just felt good. I think it goes back to the garden too. I don't know. No balls for that. That brings clarity. Okay. So as time goes on and, you know, there were these fruit trees amongst the place of pleasure. And, and the fruit... It was better than the kite's fruit on a Wednesday night. Sorry, kites, but the, if you don't come out on a Wednesday night, just come out for the fresh cut fruit from the kites. How about it, Pastor? I mean, it's good, but there was some really good fruit there, but you know there was the one that they were instructed. Just, just all of them and everything, but not this one. Well, that individual who had a common voice one day we just happened to gather around that area of the garden and conversation went pretty deep, pretty deep that day to where the slyness and the cunningness and the deceit, oh, there was truth spoken, but there was also lies and deceit. Lies and deceit to make Eve believe that God was not all good and that he was holding back his best. He was good and you got all of this, but he's holding back. See, you can't eat of this one. Oh yeah, you can have some, but he won't give you all. He was holding back the best and he convinced her and she took eat. She ate of the forbidden fruit. Gentlemen, this posed a question in my mind as a man. Why in this situation did Adam not intervene with his wife and the deceit that was coming upon her, take her beautiful face from what she was seeing, taking her emotions from what was being driven the wrong way and grab her beautiful face and turn it back towards him or away from the deceit and not lead her into the truth that she deserves to be led into. Why? Why was that? Men, it's time for us as men, as guys, as single guys, prepare yourself now to begin to pray for your wives and your daughters particularly, but also your sons. As Adam stood by passively, he did nothing. He should have stepped in to protect his wife. It's time for husbands and dads to step up and to step in and to be a prayer partner for their wives and for their daughters, for their minds and for their thoughts. You see, I believe there's an Eve factor, Adam and Eve, Eve factor here. Now we can go back and, 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 you know, they teach that women's minds are like a bowl of spaghetti all together. Don't laugh, guys. We are only a flat plate, <laughs> all right, with a waffle with boxes. And we're lucky to jump from one box to the other and remember where we just were, hurt ourselves in between. All right? Love you guys. But women's emotions and women are just different. Men were given a particular calling in their lives. You might say, I'm not a man. I'm not a, I mean, you are a man. You, I'm a man, but I'm not a husband. I'm not a father. You still have a lot of influence. And you can do a lot of good. And the world needs you to contribute. But it shows truly that women are more trusting. Women are more giving. There are more women believers in Christ than there are men. There are more women that partake in Bible studies. 
There are more women that register to reading their Bibles regularly. There are more women that pray, more women praying than men. It's time for us as guys to begin to pray against the discouragement and the things that come upon your wife, your daughter, and your children. Stop standing by and letting the lies, the worries, the concerns, the trials, the tribulations, the challenges sweep you and your wife off your feet. In 1 Peter chapter 2, I'm going to now equip you with what matters most. To what you can grab hold of and give intentionality. Listen, a lot of times we react as in the condition I am in, not intentionally. All of these things around us begin to clog our minds and bring confusion. And we as men, because we're not focusing, praying, worshiping God to completeness, it's cloudier and cloudier and we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing as men and as husbands. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Abandon every form of evil. This word abandon, it is the thought that we must be completely free from evil and be at rest within. It is a place of purity. It is an oasis of rest, abandon. You see, when we, you know, I mean, what fills your brain, your mind, your emotions? You know, our phones, every time my phone rings, get out in there, rings, email, Instagram, text, let go, Facebook Marketplace, news, All orange, lies from news, falsery that constantly Jesus has disappeared. What he desires for you is to be in place of clarity. How do I do that? What do I focus on most? Abandon every. I want God's desire for you is to be an oasis of rest. The challenges don't affect you because of the clarity that you have. Abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy. This word hypocrisy really grabbed my attention. Hypocrisy, a hypercritical attitude of pulling things apart for judgmental analysis. Hypocrisy. A hypercritical attitude of pulling things apart for judgmental analysis. Why is it that we Christians are so hypercritical and judgmental? I was talking to the guy the other day, preacher, local preacher. Hey, what's going on in your church? Tell me about live stream. How many people you got back to church? So we started chatting. And let me just advertise. And if you're listening to us online, welcome. We love you. But you need to intentionally get out of the condition you're in. Get Intentionally choose to come back to church. God gives us a promise that to gather together as believers and do it all the more as you see the day, the return of Jesus Christ about to happen. So I'm going to encourage you to intentionally choose to come back to church. If you want space, we have plenty of space here. But I want to encourage you, please come back to church. This is the conversation that this pastor and I got into. And he says, someone who has not yet returned to his church, he was talking to. And that guy who has not yet returned began to talk about someone else who was in their 90s who hasn't yet returned to church and tell him all about how he sees them in the grocery stores in an hour about town. Yeah, come on already. Like, what? 
What? Christians, where's my words, are super hypercritical attitude and judgmental analysis. We've got to fight against that because that really overflows us. That's something we're fighting against constantly. And our human nature is to be so critical and judgmental. Abandon. There is a place of oasis of rest. There is an oasis of rest that I want you to live in, your mind to be in. To, re, to, to not have evil, deceit, hypocrisy, not have feelings of jealousy and slander. Verse 2, in the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you, me, we must intensely and intentionally crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk causes you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for life. Milk of God's word. God's word acts like an antibiotic against guile, slyness, cunningness, hypercritical attitudes, and being overjudgmental. Did you get that? God's word works as an antibiotic against the human nature inside of you. Especially now, verse 3 says... That you have had a taste of the goodness of God and have experienced his kindness. Has anybody experienced, were you here today? You experienced the kindness and the love of God. You see, I was chatting with Dr. Bill earlier, and we were, we were you know, just talking. I like to ask questions, and we got on the conversation. He said, you know, I'm old. I don't need to be playing guitar anymore. And that was his words, not mine. And so he's like, somebody just needs to replace me. But we were talking about the fact of the blessing of our children serving God. And he says, you know, my children, my wife, my helpmate taught my children how to worship, how to give thanks to God. And he says, I really look and reflect about how effective that has been in their lives. Because they're experiencing over and over the goodness, the joy of God. It is his word. It is the thanksgiving from our hearts that puts our minds in a place, in an in, in oasis of rest. And if you'll draw your attention here a second, I'm going to do my illustration, okay? So you have the Word of God. You have thanksgiving. You have praise. You have worship. And as you do those things, all these other things disappear. And you are brought back to the oasis of rest that God has called you to be in. And to operate in. And man, this will give you the power, the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge to be able to lead your families as God has called you to do. We have to get self-grounded and grow ourselves. We have to focus on what matters the most. You get results by focusing on the actions that gets you the results. We just defined the actions. You never get better. You never grow yourself by accident. It has to be intentionally applying the effects that result in growth within myself and you. Guys, I know communication is probably a challenge for you because we are a man. But I would encourage you to gather with your family. Make sure that they know your values that you lead them with vision and boldness in your home, that you're inspired and driven, that you're embracing your position as a father and as a man, and that you're stepping into that point of leadership. We need a world who is filled with guys infused, guys with integrity and purity, husbands of virtue, leading with profound humility, striving for excellence and giving our best. Full of courage and standing up, when no one else will. Can you imagine if online with the 
all the reveal pictures that you see, if there were began to be pictures of the husband knelt down, praying on his wife's womb for the child to come. Can you imagine if that was the pictures you started to see in social media? It's possible as we as men begin to get clarity and stay focused. And listen, this is not easy. This is everyday work, hard work. Putting in your earbuds as you mow your lawn or whatever it is to get these and this information and this truth inside of you and praise and worship. Proverbs says the righteous have a refuge in their integrity. Living a life in right standing with God and doing what matters most encompasses you and your family in a place of sheltered safety. You know, it's sad today, Brother Rick, if you'd be so kind. Give it up for Brother Rick. He's going to clean up my mess. <clears throat> Single guys, do you know what is sexy to women? This is sad. Put it this kind of. What's the most attractive to women today is number one, you have a job. Yeah, listen. Wow. Number two, you pay your bills on time. I'm embarrassed. I'm glad I'm married. Like, I, I just can't believe it, but I can. I have some friends who have Burger Kings, and, and they said in two in the same day. Now, minimum wage in PA is like under eight bucks, I think, and they were paying 15 bucks an hour to start. Two guys, same day, not even knowing each other, said I'd rather be sitting on my couch. Here's another QR code for you. This guy's name is Anthony O'Neill. Anthony, I love Anthony, follow him, Instagram, follow him. He's a Christian, he's single, he loves Jesus, and he tithes. And he talks about it constantly. Okay? Now, he follows biblical stewardship. Therefore, he's very wealthy. Just saying. Here's one of his posts. There's no such thing as a dishonorable job. Driving for Uber. We need you. Cleaning bathrooms. Much respect. Working at Wendy's. You're making money. The only dishonorable job is being 30 plus and still asking your parents for money because you are not working. Follow them. He's under the Ramsey Solution team. Guys, you know one of the greatest financial, one of the greatest pressures in your household when you turn the doorknob of your house, one of the greatest pressures in your household is your finances. And you can take care of it. Get a second, a third, or a fourth job. Quit being stupid with your spending. Get on a budget. Number one, get on a budget, quit spending. And set up an emergency fund for your wife because I'm going to tell you, your household's going to become pleasurable. Six months is your goal. Eventually, don't crush yourself. First thousand bucks, but get six months Emergency fund in the bank, in the money market. Emergency is not, let's go out to eat tonight, honey. No, that's not an emergency. An emergency is not paying your stupid credit card bill. No, no. An emergency is you blew a tire on your car. It's all-wheel drive and you can't replace one stinking tire anymore. Why is that? Because they're unworn and now your car all-wheel drive thinks that one's slipping because that one's not because they're all different sizes. Uh, what is with this world? That's an emergency. That's an emergency. When your wife calls you up and says, honey, the refrigerator's leaking all over the place. Honey, relax, girlfriend. I want you to get online and order yourself one because we got this thing called an emergency fund. For those of you guys whose wives did the old emoji about finances like this or like this, means you've made some pretty stupid decisions, uh-huh, and they've just given up. But you as a guy need to fix this in your house, and I am passionate about this. You need to fix it. 
and bring about that peacefulness of biblical stewardship into your home. Grow yourself. It's all over. Biblical teaching is all over. Podcasts, YouTubes. You have to focus on what's intentional. Intentionally focus. If you want to reign in life, don't sit on your hands. Instead, work hard at doing what's right. Focus on the action to get you the result for the slacker will end up working to make someone else succeed. Men, discover discover what you were born to do and make it happen. You were created to fulfill a unique role. Not just men. We were created to fulfill a unique role in and through our jobs, through what we do with a lot of our time. Working on a purpose isn't about a paycheck. You will win, you will get a paycheck and you will get enough of a paycheck. But fulfilling a desire that every man and woman has to make a difference brings a great contribution to the world that you are required to do as an individual with the purpose of God in your hearts, making it a better place. You were created to contribute, all of us were. Confidence and strength flood the hearts of those who love God and who live in an awe and a respect of him. And their devotion provides their children with a place of shelter and security to live as a passionate lover of God will bring benefits even to your children. Now, I'm not closing I'm transitioning my mind from fathers to the fatherless. But before I do, every male in the house, I want you to stand. Every male in the house, I don't care how old you are, I want you to stand. I want to pray for you. Can I pray for you this morning? Every man in the house, stand to your feet. Heavenly Father, you see every male in this house. You've, you've, you're here with us, Father. Yeah, I may have stepped on some toes, got up in their grill, Father God, but Jesus Almighty, we want to see you. Jesus, though we only want to see you, but I need you to create a desire with inside of me to want to see you. The things of this world clog, cloud my mind, my feelings, and I can't even lead my household right, much less making a difference in the world. And Father, we humbly say today, we need your strength. We need your power. We need your ability. Father, I thank you for every man that's here. And I pray that these words are encouraging words to continue the fight. Continue pressing into God. Continue reading the word of God. Continue being in a place of thanksgiving and worship each and every day, Father, so that you may put us in an oasis of rest where you desire us to be with clarity and focus. Bless every man, every household represented here today in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Let me just quickly speak to the fatherless. And as we did to the father, the husband, the fatherless, this is the one-year anniversary weekend for me to be without a father. Pastor Doug's first Father's Day to be without a father. You may be a widow, your husband. I'm talking father's husband, but this is applicable to everybody, okay? You may be a widow, or you may be fatherless because of an offense. An offense does exactly what it says. It creates a fence between you and them. So I don't know today if you are fatherless, the reason why. But if you get nothing else for those who are fatherless, grab this Stupid, simple statement. Relax. You're not crazy. We're living in a crazy world. Crazy times. So I say to the the widows, to the fatherless, you got this. Relax. You can do this. You can press on. We're living in a crazy, crazy world. In Acts 16 you got these two guys who had an experience with Jesus that could not contain themselves because of the goodness of Jesus. Their names were Paul and Silas. They were entering into a Roman call in the Macedonia, and as they were coming in to actually to go to prayer, there was this obnoxious girl. 
has nothing to do with women. She shouldn't even pause. There was this obnoxious girl who was a fortune teller who was constantly going behind them and screaming out this crazy stuff. And behind her were the men who used her for great financial gain. And finally, Paul and Silas had enough, and Paul turned around and he rebuked the evil spirit to come up outside of her. And what he did was destroyed these guys' business job. And they were livid until they drugged them into the city courts. They were wrongfully beaten, bruised, bones broken, and thrown into prison. There they sit in the innermost cell, it says, way back in the rocks where it was super cold, water dripping, aggravating them with the sounds, rats. They were in shackles. They were tied. Bones were broken. Blood was oozing. Bruises were setting in. All the other prisoners around were groaning, cussing, screaming, dying, starving, starvation. All kinds of noises and things were going on. They were in a bad condition but they were going to act intentionally. Paul and Silas knew what to do to have full clarity in Jesus Christ. They knew what to do to get back to the place where they needed to be because the condition, they couldn't respond to the condition they were in. They had to intentionally, with purpose, act in a a specific way. What did they begin to do? It says that in the middle of the night, they began to pray and give God thanks. And it says that while all the other prisoners, they stopped, silence came upon the echo in the prison. And it says that they all listened. That word listened means listening with pleasure as if listening to beautiful Harmonious music. Can you imagine? You know what they did? They entered an oasis of rest, which created a ripple effect, and others were there with them. How beautiful is that for the fatherless? They were dealt a deal that they did not deserve, they were wronged. They didn't have the words to speak because, you know, they were Roman citizens. What they did was wrong. Maybe you've never had a chance to say the words you need to say. Maybe you've had words spoken to you that are just cutting, hurtful. The absence of the Father is brutal. Jeremiah says, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. Jesus doesn't just love, he is love. Proverbs, to worship God in wonder and all opens a foundation of life within you, empowering you to escape death's dominions, empowering you to turn from deadly snares. And now, from your heavenly Father to you this morning. Second Chronicles were told that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro across the whole earth looking for someone that he may strongly support because your heart is yielded to him. The heart of healing is the life of flesh. When I read that, The heart of healing is the life of flesh. That means, folks, constantly we're being hurt, but yet able to be healed. Remember the word of God is a double-edged sword. One side cuts, one side heals. I pray that you become shocked out of your mind by the amazement of God's wonderful works in your hand, being reminded of the authority that God has and that is inside of you. 
Psalms 103 says, higher than the highest heavens. That's how high your tender mercies extend, O God. Greater than the grandeur of heaven above is the greatness of your loyal love, towering all of those who reverence him and bow down before him. Farther from the sunrise to the sunset, that's how far our guilt is removed from us. The same way a loving loving father feels towards his children. That is an example of the tender feelings that he has towards us. That scripture means and actually is the same root word as womb. That God has the same feelings that a woman naturally has because the child was in her womb to nurture and to love that child. That's the same characteristics and nature of your heavenly father. Lord, you know all about us inside and out. You're mindful that we were made from just dust. Our days are so fuel and monetary, beautiful, and so swiftly our lives fade away. But Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other, unbroken, unrelenting towards us. Your faithfulness to keep your gracious promises that you've made, not just to us, but it was from parents to children to grandchildren and beyond. If there's one thing that I know for sure, we are continually encouraged in Scripture to rejoice. And as Christians, we need to learn to constantly rejoice, constantly look that the glass is half full, not half empty. But it says to rejoice not because evil spirits are subject to the power of Jesus' name or subject to you through the power of God with inside of you. But rejoice that your names are registered in heaven. Yeah. Listen, as bad as it gets, as low as it gets, rejoice because your names are registered in heaven, that you belong to God's kingdom. And this is the true source of your authority. John says in chapter 14, listen guys, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Are you in a position today? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? I pray that you have or that you do, but that you would intentionally stay focused on what matters the most. God bless you. You know, isn't it interesting that we come to church and unlike the world, we are constantly encouraged to live better, to do better, to persevere. You know, out in the world, they never say, come on, you need, to, you need to be better morally, or you need to be better in your finances, or you need to be better in your marriage. And the only way we can do all of that, any of that, is the Lord strengthens us, right? That the Lord does it through us. Come on, stand with me this morning. And let's take just a moment and say to him, God, I need you to live this through me. The reality is that it's just not possible. We can live part of it. Maybe you're very successful in some part of faith, one part or another of living the life. Of, you just look back over the week and you say, well, I was really successful in reading my Bible this week. Or, you know, I, I, I had a good prayer life this week. Or maybe I, I sang a lot of worship songs and I just feel like I really worship. But then there's always going to be that other part, you know, just that struggle, Right? That, that area in which you feel, or maybe a couple areas you think, I, I don't even know if I can go to church this week. God is so disappointed with me. But the fact that you feel that conviction is a reminder that he's with you. Amen? That nobody out there feels that conviction. If they do, they run away from it. You, like firemen to a burning building, you run to it. You know there's going to be conviction here at Central every week. You know it. And yet you show up anyways. Because you and I are saying to the Lord, I want to be more like Jesus. 
my flesh is saying, I don't want to be like Jesus. I want to be less like Jesus, right? But the Holy Spirit in me is bearing witness with my spirit. I want to be more like Jesus. Let's uh, make room in our hearts this morning for that. Father, we are needy, desperately needy. We can't do this apart from you. We cannot be successful men. We can't be successful sons, husbands, fathers. We can't be successful brothers. We cannot encourage others unless we have you working through us, living through us. We come into this place again today, Lord, to remind you to say it again. We know you know it, but we want to say it out loud. We want to say it to you. God, apart from you, there is no possibility that I succeed. Faith is too difficult. Living this life is nearly impossible. Pleasing you is a goal I cannot achieve in my own strength or power. I cry out for you. Now, while your heads are bowed this morning, if there's somebody, as Pastor Adam began this morning, he said, if you don't know Jesus, I challenge you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up on that. Come on, if you don't know him, he never asks you to live this life in your own strength, to come to him and show him how good you've done, to impress him, to prove to him that you can do it. It's never that way. He invites you to give up, to let go, to surrender, to lay down your ability, your strength, your power. If you come to him and you do not lay that down, he will make it so that you have to lay it down. He's the Messiah. He's the king on the throne. He's not interested in you climbing up on the throne and sharing it with him. When I do that, he always has to discipline and humble me. The Lord is able. If you've never invited him in, why don't you do that right where you are? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Live through me. Live through me. Now, Father, help us day and this week. Help us. Help us. Help us. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask Sister Pam to lead us in that course in just a moment. And I want our brother in Christ, missionary pastor Aaron Santamire is here with us this weekend. Are you still here, Brother Aaron? Yeah, there he is. And after we sing the song, I'm going to have him close, come and close in prayer this morning. So good to have them in here for a few weeks this summer, being here on our side of the, of the world. Folks, I love you. Just love being with you. Come on, let's worship the Lord this morning for just a moment.